Well, hello everybody. Here we are at Impact 2011, the uh, IBM WebSphere conference. And we're actually in a subconference. We're at the unconference that uh, the Impact Unconference. Is that, is that the official title of it? Yeah, the it's, Impact it's, it's unconference. yeah, absolutely. Unconference. And uh, as always, this is Michael Cote uh, of Red Monk, and I've got a guest with myself. You want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Andy Piper. I work in our Hursley Laboratory, which is in the UK. Uh, I'm. Uh, I think my job title at the moment, because it kind of moves around a bit. I well, it's, it's WebSphere Messaging Community Lead, is what I do. Ah, uh, right. Basically, that's that's MQ. It's Q uh, stuff, right? Or yeah, what, absolutely. What falls under WebSphere Messaging? So, so the stuff, and that stuff was originally invented and developed from Hersey, which is where I sit. So, yeah, so what, what have we got? We've got uh, WebSphere MQ, uh, which is Q stuff. Uh, we've got a family of products around that. So we've got the WebSphere MQ File Transfer Edition, which enables you to move files over MQ. We've got uh, WebSphere MQ Low Latency Messaging for very high-speed messaging. We've got WebSphere MQ Telemetry, which is about mobile and, uh, and uh, sensor networks. Um, I'm going to miss something. We've got WebStream MQ Advanced Message Security, which is for encrypting messages. Right. And we've got the Message Broker, which is our enterprise service bus. There's this resurgence of queues in, yeah. in, in, in architectures. I, I'm not even going to say enterprise architectures, because what's, no. what's interesting is that all sorts of architectures for software, they're sort of rediscovering, I guess, uh, using a queue, or to put it another way, having an event-driven architecture, a and, bus and or something like that. And the fact that by doing so, you can actually start to parallelize workload. You know, isn't that an amazing thought. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, absolutely. The idea of feeding some work to a process over a period of time and not having to have it instantly respond, but knowing that it will be, be done. Have it be asynchronous, I guess. Yeah, and, and that word, again, we've been talking about the last couple of days. I, I've been a consultant, you know, and often people hear the word asynchronous and they go, uh, that sounds slow. <laughs> right? And it's like, no, it's just, it's just the difference between what we're doing, you know, having an immediate conversation and an immediate response, right. or may, may get a very fast response, but it's, it's, it's not time dependent, right? That's, the, yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's what it means. Asynchronous is not something that's not time dependent. I feel like at some point, asynchronous programming fell out of use. I don't know if it fell out of favor, but it, it kind of, because I, I guess maybe it all came down to, the, to web applications, which is a very synchronous sort of uh, process. A, a request comes in and, and there's, I'm, I'm drawing a line here, a request <laughs> completes. Like, yeah. you, you expect the client to be waiting. Well, it and, does. And then, I mean, that's right. I mean, and, HTTP and then I guess, times out, right? An HTTP request will time out. Right. And, and then Ajax came along, and A being asynchronous, if I remember. And I guess that's that right. kind of started to change things around a little bit. So, so what exactly is a queue? Like, uh, what what, is, how what does a queue, queue operate? So I, I think of a queue as a bucket into which I can throw something and then take it back, or something yeah. else, somebody else can take it out every now and then when they need it. So, so what queuing an M message queue, MQ uh, lets us do is to say, here's a, here's a bunch of data uh, I'm creating, uh, and I'm just going to put it over there, and I may come and get it back later myself as a process, or actually another process may take it from there. It's, right. just, a way, it's just a place to put pieces of work or pieces of data. The important thing to note is it's not a database. Right? It's not somewhere you're shoving data to store. Right. You're putting it there temporarily until somebody comes along and takes it away and does something else with it. And, and so does that imply that it's sort of not searchable, if you will? Um, it's not searchable in the same way as a database. What we can do is we can do things like uh, assign a load of unique IDs, and actually that's exactly how uh, message queuing works, is that every message has a unique ID. Right. And we can go and find that ID and get it from the pile. Um, that's the extent to which it's searchable, but you're not expecting to do like a full text. Do a bunch of queries. Yeah, over a full it, text analyze. index on a, on, a, on a bunch of data. So why don't you just use like a, a shared directory? I mean, I mean, that would kind of be, that's a bucket, right? It's, it's a bucket which is very secure and stable and um, assured, right? So the, the goal is to say, let's take away the, um, the need to give stuff to a file system which could crash or become corrupt. So let's give it to a thing which will put it into this queue for us and give it back to us or give it to something else. And by the way, that queue may not be local to me. It may be over our network somewhere. So yes, you could put it in a shared directory in the sense of a network drive. Um, but then, of course, you need the same file system technology. Or right, you know, everybody needs to implement Samba or NFS or whatever you're going to share. Right. Um, the, I mean, what you're getting at, if correct me if I'm wrong, is that if you use a directory, then you're depending on the file system and the storage yeah. as part of your architecture, rather than depending on a higher up abstraction. That's right. The concept depending of somewhere on, to put on a something. service. That's right. Exactly. Right. Um, and one of the th and I'll try not to do the you know the chest beating sales pitch, and that's not what I'm here for <laughs> at all. But but 
Um, one of the things about MQ and one of the reasons why it has been very widely adopted over the last 10, 15 years is because it does run on a large variety of platforms. It has provides the same API. You're not having to think, okay, I'm on Windows now, so I need to use the .NET API to get to my file system. I'm on a on a Mac, I need to use C to get to Objective C to get to my to my file system. Right? It's a right. totally different way. Of pro it's same API on any platform that MQ exists. Um, you've got the ability, as I mentioned, to choose to send data over a network to some other queue. It's a, it's a passing mechanism. Um, and, and then inherent in networking, I mean, once, once you bring some network thing, there's security gets involved. Security, and you can give SSL over and channels and, and, and things like that. So we, what we have in MQ is a concept of a channel between two queue managers that own all of the queues on that system. And then between them, we have a channel, and we can encrypt that tunnel right. using SSL. So we, yeah, you have security. You have the ability, and this is another important aspect of MQ, is assurance, right? You want to just rely on the fact that you have something reliable moving the data for you. And, 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 and in the, the case of MQ and maybe queues in general, yeah. is that assurance the same thing as sort of transactional integrity in, in a database, or is it more assurance that your stuff won't disappear? Mm, or is it both? Yes. <laughs> yes. But, and, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, in, in, in database terms, like a transactional thing is that uh, there will never be two states of the data yeah, that, yeah. that so, you're accessing. So, absolutely. So, and, and, the, and there's another aspect, of course, which is when you're talking about databases, you talk about um, two-phase commits and all that kind of stuff and the ability to say, I want to do these operations and either the whole set of operations right. commits or fails. And actually, I might want to do that with two databases or and a file system. Right. Like, like tra system. transferring money between two accounts exactly. is a, the so, classic example. So MQ is very commonly used in those kind of scenarios to say, I need to get this message from this queue, update those two database tables belonging to two different systems, and put this message to this queue, and do all of that within a tra transaction. Right. So we, that, that's what our message broker and our MQ technology does for you. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the assurance is, I'm giving the, my stuff to some other process to look after for me, and I want to make sure that it arrives. So when I get told locally by the queue manager that my, it's got my data and put it and the, the put has succeeded, then I can rely on the assurance that my MQ network will get that data somewhere else once and once only. Right, right, right. Okay, that's another important concept here. You're not getting duplication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you, know, you might end up doing the same operation twice. Uh, and 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 then yeah, uh, if if something crashes, if my local queue manager or the remote queue manager crashes and we've put that message in what we call a persistent state, because we can do things in memory as well and be non-persistent, Right. Um, that we could recover to a known state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Ah. So, yeah, you don't want to lose work, especially if you're updating bank accounts. Right? You must know better than I do how old MQ is, right? But it's definitely yeah. been, it's one of the older IBM software Oh uh, Yeah, it used to be called MQ series. It's about 15 years, I think, now. Right, right. And so, to give you the chance to not so much be a salesman, but, right. but, but kind of say, what that gets you, like the differentiation that MQ has. I mean, what what is it about MQ that makes it something beyond like an ES, an open source ESB that you might get, or an, yeah, yeah. Or an open source queue? But first of all, it gives you stability of function, right? So we've been around for a long time, um, and, and, and actually the upgradeability has been really good as well. So you yeah. can take a, you know, different versions of MQ and they can talk to one another. Um, that's always been in the so so the sort of cross platform interoperability. Yeah, exactly. You mentioned that earlier. And upgradeability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's the first thing. Longevity so of, of, of yeah. the, the So in, in terms of feature, you've got, you know, we've also constantly working on, working to improve performance. You've got a high performing system if you, if you need one, if you need to tune it that way. You've got things like clustering, which let you, do let you distribute work uh, over a number of different systems. And actually it's one of the things that we would come back to around this rediscovery of the idea of queuing. Right. Did you hear that news about Twitter rewriting their search engine? Oh, right, right, right. right. And, and I was reading that they, they've actually now got a thing which dispatches your query to one of several engines, so they can suddenly workload balance all these queries that are coming into their search engine. And that's what clustering does for you, right? You right, start right. to uh, move, move work around really easily. Uh, you've got, oh gosh, you've got loads of things. Security, you've got this emergence of this new family of products in the last two or three years, the file transfer, the advanced message security, the telemetry, these have all been added on to MQ because the vision for MQ from, from an IBM perspective is universal messaging. So the idea is that data, your data anytime, anywhere, if you like, sure, uh, sure. over whatever is the appropriate quality of service to give you at the point that you're at. Are, with, are you in your transactional data center or are you on a mobile device? You know, right, right, right. How fast do you need to go? 
uh, how reliable does it need to be? How secure does it? So need you sort of customize the footprint or the profile down to the endpoint, or, or in, in a way. So and that's particularly what telemetry is actually. Telemetry is absolutely for um, smaller devices, customized to the network capability that's available. That kind of thing. One, one thing I'm I'm always curious about with middleware, and and I use that phrase tentatively here, yeah. is would you say when someone's some organization is using MQ, is it more of a middleware component in their software stack, or is it a system that they're running? Oh. That, does that distinction make yeah, sense? Like, okay. So I, I would say it's a middleware component, really. Right. So it's it's kind of it's, 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 it's not a, a service. It's not a universal no, sort of no, service. No, I mean services would usually themselves use MQ or run on MQ. So you might you'll program your service. Right. Your application may be a, uh, it may use MQ to do its be its interface to the world. Right. right. If you think about an application, we were talking about this in the on conference this morning, actually. Uh, and a guy was asking about files and how do I get move away from file driven batch to right, right. SOA services and, and actually you know people are always going to be sending files in some form or another so you might be able to reduce the number of files coming in but you're probably not going to eliminate them so yeah, get over the files are just get so comfortable them. well they are they are <laughs> and, and and you know everybody has notepad and we can just hack away right um but more more to the point that's how I submit my batch jobs notepad <laughs> notepad nice, <laughs> nice. So, but it's just another interface. So if you think of a, a program that takes input, and you mentioned shared directories maybe, it could be reading files, it could be reading from keys, it could be receiving HTTP calls, it could be coming in over TCP. You know, you've got a range of different ways. So, so you can see files and queues as, as different interfaces to your services. Mm. So in, in coming back to your question, therefore the, I would see queuing as a component, you know, if you, if you right, like right, a middleware right. component, a, a feature, a capability of your system. Right, so it, it's it's not some something bigger than the applications that use it that you kind of integrate with. It's more you pull it in as part of your application. Yeah, I mean, one of the ways that people often talk about it uh, is, is, is as plumbing, right? It's, yeah. It's, you know, it's the pipe work that goes underneath your right, right. Uh, your house. Having taken a kind of technology first approach, mm. so you know, I think I think a lot of people, including myself, until I was uh, uh, beaten over the head with it a lot, like they hear things like batch job and jobs and queues and and. Frankly, it's sort of like I have no idea how that stuff is used, like what, what the business applications of that are, right? right? And, then, and then like you were saying, you know, people ask like, oh, we get these files transferred to us, and what do we do with that? And, and it, it would be, it'd be great to hear sort of like what, I, I, I'm always hesitating to, because I want to come up with something that doesn't sound like a stupid business term, but like <laughs> what business services are these, are our queues being used for? I mean, everyone. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right, again, right. I'm, I've, I've been a consultant, and I've worked with, you know, retail and finance and government and every every system can, can conceptually use them and, right. and many companies and organizations and industries do use them. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean the need to transfer data between point A and point B or point A and points B, C, D, E and yeah, F yeah, or whatever is, yeah. every application needs that but, but it seems like it seems like there's a certain class of applications that use queues a lot more than others. And like like a lot of financial applications yeah, use yeah, queues to basically to synchronize yeah. payments yeah. Or, or transfers between accounts. I mean things like that. There's things that I think if you were writing this kind of application, you probably use a queue just without thinking about it. Whereas as, as you were saying, someone like Twitter is not going to be using yeah, but it. I mean the other thing is so web services. Web services great. I know you guys at Revmonk are really big fans of the web service <laughs> That's right. standards and all that XML stuff. Right? Yeah. Um, so. So HTTP is great as a, as a transport for web services, except it's synchronous. Right. right. So if the other end isn't listening or isn't available or is too busy, then your call will time out and you will have to handle that. So hey, what a great idea. If, if that guy's too busy because it's, it's got loads of incoming requests, then why not, instead of having an HTTP call, put a queue there. Yeah. So you can do things like web services over JMS. So you know your, your, your calling application that's invoking the service can just just do that via, via sending a message somewhere. It doesn't have to be synchronous. Right, and then right. it can wait and come back later. So you've got uh, things like the WS addressing standard, which let you say, call me back on this address later when, when you're done. All uh, right. Okay. And, 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 I, and I imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong, but situations like, like retail data might be nice for that. If you have like hundreds of stores that need to, for whatever reason, send their current inventory needs well, to I mean, a Well, that kind of place. thing is also trickle feed, right? The idea of trickle feed is, is kind of very powerful in retail that you just want to, as, as people you know, buy stuff through, come through Best Buy and, and, uh, and going through transactions at the, at, the, at, the, uh, at the register, then those just maybe get 
fired off up to uh, So it's a lot more real time than like 24 hour time. batches. It can be real time, absolutely. You don't right. have to have all of that, all of those transactions batched up in the store and then overnight FTP them to, to home. You could just start to literally right. feed to. If you go in the Apple store, you know, and they'll say, uh, do you want me to receive email to you? Right. And, and you know, magic, really, they email it to you. Yeah, and yet you can also go online and see what you've purchased. So there's probably a queue involved in there oh, somewhere. Who knows? <laughs> I, I guess kind of the, the last question is, so I mean, MQ is like 15 years old, right? And what, I mean, what, what are you guys thinking about doing in the next five years or whatever? I mean, well, what, like something that's as old as MQ. It, 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 at some let's point, not pulling it old. Let's just, you know, it's not old. Something it's, that's it, as, it's as rich, mature. It's rich and mature, right? There you it's go. It's very capable. I, I, well said. Like, you know, there's always this question of, well, let me grab my blue, blue hat and blue, blue <laughs> right. collar. Right. There's always this question of, is there anything left to do? Right? And, and, and there so is. Like, and there is. So, what what so are the things that are left so to do there in the queuing space? All, right. So there's emerging models and emerging programming patterns and ways of ac accessing data. So I mentioned our telemetry protocol, which is very optimized for what, for IBM Smarter Planet story, right? right? The whole Smarter Planet, let's, let's make use of this instrumented planet we've built and start to get receive data from those sensors onto our data backbone, which is MQ. To right. trickle in, perhaps, as you yeah, were saying. Yeah, trickle really. in, maybe, or, or maybe you need to actually do kind of two-way communication. Um, so, so that's a nice and interesting model. Um, there are also things like uh, some of the new, uh, newer web push models, uh, and I can't talk too much about specific plans, but, but you know, we're very aware of things like the ability to push data to web browsers through oh, new right, technologies. Right. Right. There's sort of new endpoints that emerge yeah, that you want absolutely. to integrate with. Um, you know, mobile is obviously huge, um, and, and, and it's about not abandoning the existing data backbone customers, because that's, you know, because they're absolutely core, cool, but to extend the ability to interact with the, the queuing right. fabric from uh, new, uh, new programming models, new languages, and new protocols, potentially. So, yeah, uh, you can see that Telemetry is, uh, as an example of one of those, um, the ability to uh, plug into your existing MQ infrastructure uh, right. with a specialized protocol for, um, for lightweight networks. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, no, I, that's, that's, where we, that's, that's, that's where all of the cool stuff's happening. Yeah, yeah. And also, some of the data encryption around the, the, the compliance situations that people find themselves in, we're, we've been looking at that. I mean, just got to look at the releases over the last few years that we've been doing, and that's where they're geared. Usability is always important as well. You know, the ability to more effectively manage things in a nice, usable way. Um, I think it's a great product from a usability perspective anyway. But um, right. there's always nicer things you can tweak. Well, great. Well, thanks for taking all this time no to worries. go over MQ cool. stuff.